Hey Ryan, I'm Will. Welcome back to the channel for 2024. I just want to say a big quick thank you to everyone who has subscribed and regularly watches the channel over the last year or two. It really means a lot every time you like, you comment, you click and watch the video. It helps the channel to grow and it does make it that little bit more sustainable to be continuously putting out a new video each week. As you can imagine, a lot of time and effort goes into running a YouTube channel. So just getting that feedback from you guys, getting those positive responses, you sharing the videos, telling people about it, it all adds up and helps go a long way. So thank you so much for that. And moving into 2024, definitely am aiming to and have began creating new videos to upload one every single week. I know what it's like when you have a hobby or a passion and you're either just getting started or maybe you've been doing it for some time and you feel like you've just plateaued and you're not really getting those results that you're after. And when that happens, you start to lose that desire, the motivation, and it's just not as satisfying. So in the video here, I'm gonna give you some tips that hopefully will help you just push through that plateau and start to get those results. And most importantly, just get that fulfillment and enjoyment out of this beautiful art that we call photography. So looking back across the last 12 months, um, what can I say? I'm so fortunate and thankful to be able to do this full time um, primarily through teaching, running workshops here in New Zealand. I also made it back out to Australia as well for a few coastal workshops. And moving forward into 2024, all of the group workshops are booked out. So as you can imagine, across the 12 months, I'm out in the field so much. I'd say, you know, 300 days a year for sure that I'll be out there in the field one way or another. But during this time as well, and including YouTube and the online video tutorials that I have, you can imagine how much teaching I'm doing and how much engagement I'm having with students, with like-minded people when it comes to photography. So every year, every few months, I'm definitely learning more and more myself. And I'm always trying to figure out a way to simplify the creative process. How do we get the results we're after in essentially the fastest but most enjoyable way possible and the most effective way as well. When I look back on my photography this year, I actually see it compared to probably the previous few years. I feel like the last 12 months, I've really simplified things. It might not be that obvious looking at the images themselves, but I just feel like my workflow in particular is just getting simpler and simpler. I guess, you know, when it comes to shooting, as you were probably aware, I don't use a tripod. I haven't used a tripod for six or so years now, but, um, just the workflow and techniques and even the desire just to create a single image and just keep it as simple as possible, I feel like has been the goal. There's a real freedom that comes from simplicity and not overdoing things too much. I feel like when I'm going out in the field, I'm not so much focusing on all the minute little details, which maybe I did a few years ago. Instead, and this is my first big tip to you guys, when it comes to composition, First and foremost, just concentrate on the big obvious shapes because that's what composition is. It's the alignment of shapes. Now, obviously we can break that down further into color and tonality, but initially let's just find the obvious shapes and look for a sense of balance. When you look at some of these images here that I've made over the past 12 months, one of the key considerations when it comes to composition and knowing what to do out in the field is just looking for those primary shapes and then balancing them in a way which helps the eye cohesively flow through the, flat, the frame. Now it might not always be through the frame in a three dimensional sense, sometimes it might just be a more simplified intimate scene, but even in that case, I wanna make sure that the eye is not wandering away. So first tip, look for in the field the big obvious shapes and you always would generally start on the main subject matter. You really got to narrow that down. What is my main subject? If you're walking around out in the field wondering what to photograph then you need to stop and actually put the camera down. The camera shouldn't really come out until you know what you're there to photograph because it's jumped out at you. It could be some little flowers on the ground or it could be a big epic mountain vista you need something to jump out and speak to you first. Make it obvious what is the main subject here. Then when we discover that, that's when we look for our balance. How can I position that in my frame in a way that's not gonna lead the eye off the edges? Or how can I position it in a way that is gonna allow the viewer to know exactly what the story is? What is it that I'm trying to convey? So figure out the main subject matter, then the inspiration will come find a way to balance out that frame, 
big obvious shapes. Often in landscape photography, we're talking about rocks, plants, trees, triangular mountains, all these big shapes. Balance is critical. I love thinking about balance when I'm composing. I'm often placing that main subject matter off in the distance somewhere, what I'd call the centralized zone, essentially not on the edges, somewhere in that centralized zone. And then I'm using little barriers, little um, objects in order to lead the eye to that point. And it's very simple when I break it down and I feel like I've said this a million times over through teaching, I'm always saying it, but it's a little bit like a pinball machine, okay? The ball goes left and right. We wanna make sure that we've got elements there to keep bouncing the ball. The ball is the eye. Let's make sure that we're guiding it left, right, to that point we're trying to get to where that main subject is. And we use big shapes in order to keep the eye within the frame and not drifting off. So typically I'm avoiding negative spaces. Just if I've got a big shape on the right hand side of the frame, the lower right, for example, then I wanna make sure there's something on the lower left to balance it out. I don't want it to be an open space where the eye or that pinball can just drift off out of the frame. The other thing I wanna talk about, guys, when it comes to your photography is inspiration. A lot of people ask me about, you know, staying inspired and how do you do it? I gotta admit, it's not something I have to battle with too much. I find my inspiration always just comes from nature and just, you know, conceiving these ideas and the excitement that comes from what if, you know, what if we see this or what if this happens or, just that childlike curiosity drives me. But I, I'm not gonna lie to you, across the uh, the summer period here, the last few months, my inspiration has dwindled a little bit, just in the sense that, you know, when you're doing this as often as I am, you wanna keep raising the bar. So you're actually excelling and improving and you reach a certain point where I have, where I feel like what I wanna achieve and my aspirations, the opportunity for success just gets narrower and narrower and narrower and then you can easily just talk yourself out of even going out there and trying because you think you're not going to succeed anyway so my lesson when it comes to inspiration and i've had to refresh myself on this very recently but the lesson is just get yourself outdoors it doesn't even matter where it is you don't even need to have a specific photography goal in mind i'm telling you if you just get outside as often as you can it will come to you. And that is the biggest lesson I can provide when it comes to inspiration. Don't force your visions or your ideas onto the landscape. Instead, go in with an open heart, a clean slate. And I just know from experience, time and time again, I get goosebumps thinking about it, but it will come to you when you're out there. And I had this just a few days ago, and I've had it so many times over the years where I just go out with no goal in mind. I just put myself in an area that is conducive to inspiration and creativity. And sure enough, once you get out there and you give yourself time to just, you know, remove yourself from the noise of life or those burdens that we might be carrying, whatever it may be. Um, it's amazing how you just start to see things. You might not have been able to envision it back home or what, you know, when you're doing your planning and tr maybe you're scrolling online and you're waiting for that inspiration to come to you. It'll come to you when you're out there, but to get, you just gotta get yourself out there. And I know that's the hard part. So I wanna encourage you guys this year to get outside as much as possible. You bring the camera, but don't bring the camera like a loaded gun ready to fire away. Just have it there with you, but you don't even need to get it out. Don't worry about that. Let's not force our photography. Let's let those moments come to us. They will come to us when we're in the right headspace and getting in that right headspace means more time outdoors. The last lesson here that I wanna mention and little tip I guess for this video before we start moving forward into the, the new whole calendar year, when it comes to the processing, you know, when I put a processing video on YouTube, the, the most viewed videos that I can put up, and this is not just for me, I'm sure it's for just about every photographer out there that has a YouTube channel. It's because the, the processing part of it is, it's a whole different art form to creating the image out in the field. And it's a critical part of photography. But when it comes to the processing, I feel like there's maybe a sense that we're looking for a one-click solution or something that's just gonna be the magic bullet to our photography. I'm gonna tell you now, the processing 
it is a very integral and critical part of the photography, but the bulk of the work is done out in the field. The processing and the methods that I like to teach and use myself is incredibly simple. It's so simple, but it works that we have gotta go into the computer, into the system with a raw file that has everything in there that we need. All the data, the right composition, good subject matter, the processing is just one of the final pieces of the puzzle there. So when it comes to it, try to avoid, you know, watching so many different videos on how to post process because you're gonna get a different answer from every single person. Um, just find for yourself something that works and then just stick to it and keep reapplying it over and over and over. The more repetitions you put in, the easier it's going to get. When it gets easier, the whole process becomes more enjoyable and it will help you out in the field because when you're in the field, Sometimes we come up, or very often, we come up with these little problems. Um, very rarely does things go completely smooth in photography. So we encounter these little scenarios and the more efficient and proficient you are in your processing, it does help you out in the field. So start to get a feel for the processing that you enjoy, whether it's me, someone else, or a fusion of people that you've learned from, whatever it may be, and then just stick to it. Don't bombard your mind with so many different methods and workflows and I'm only speaking here from you know my experience through teaching and hearing from students we live in the information age so we have so much content to consume half the time it's just going in one ear out the other find something that works stick to it and then practice 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 I got to this position here because I'm self-taught when I say self-taught I do mean myself I wasn't watching a video and then going to apply it it was just going applying failing trying again eventually it's I found something that started working and I'd keep redoing it and tweaking it and here I am X amount of years later so if you've got something there that you enjoy and it's starting to work just keep practicing it okay then when you run into a hurdle that's where you need to start problem solving but don't start trying new ideas or methods if you don't feel like you need to introduce them. And that goes for gear as well. So often we might be looking for a new new lens or a new body or this, the, the next greatest thing, but why are we looking for that unless we actually need it? Very rarely do we probably ever need that stuff. So I know it's getting into a philosophical realm here, but I just know it really helps your photography. Just embrace what you have, embrace the skills that you've already learned and just start doing it over and over and over. And going back to that first tip, getting yourself out there in the field, then it will come to you. Let's not try and force it and fine tune everything and overly plan it all. And I'm gonna go there and get this and get that. I feel like you're almost setting yourself up for failure when you do that. And I am speaking from experience as well. Anyway, that's enough rambling from me. I'm sorry if this is not the exact tips you were after, but I, I truly believe that this is gonna help you in your photography just to apply some of that stuff. But of course, on the channel, I plan to keep sharing vlogs, shooting out in the field, sharing with you my thought process, the compositional thought process, and then of course, the post-processing as well. If there's anything in particular you'd love me to cover in the channel this year, of course, just please let me know. Otherwise, I'll be working away, again, trying to get a new video out each and every week and when you watch when you click that thumbs up and when you comment it does actually help with the algorithm and just helping get those videos out there so i appreciate that all right that's enough from me i hopefully see you in next week's video